Hey everybody, welcome to another one of Chris's beer reviews. Alright, so right before I pull this one out, I was at the beer fest recently, and Great Lakes Brewery had a huge sex section called Cascapalooza. And in this section, I saw something that was very clever, and that's what compelled me to try it. And that is the Miami Vice. Now, as you can tell, it, it looks, you know, in English, you would think that that was pronounced Weiss. But this is not the correct way of saying uh, what you're uh, looking at there. It is supposed to be pronounced like Weiss, like Edelweiss. Uh, you, know, you know what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, so, just to get to the point, uh, the, me the reason why... It it has vice at the ending there is because this is a wheat beer and uh, another way of calling wheat beer wheat beer is uh, by calling it Hefweizen. Uh, I believe that's German terminology or some kind of you know some language I'm not too sure but sounds like it uh, so yeah take wheat beer and uh, Hefweizen and look at how they use Vice at the ending, and you got Miami Vice, which is cool. Lame but cool. Um, 4.5% ABV. And uh, yeah, you know, when I think of Miami, uh, I think I think of, uh, of course, the colors. and uh, But most importantly, I think of like cocktails and martinis and um, coladas and all that kind of jazz. Um, just just read at the ending here. Uh, okay, we're busted. We're calling this beer a vice. It's not. Uh, we're suggesting it's from Miami. We've never even been there. Confused? So were we. What we know is it is an American-style take on a traditional wheat beer. Rather than a mild hop presence, this baby is packed with Pacific Northwest hops. It's made with a pale yeast which doesn't produce the same banana flavor you find in German vice beers. We also know it goes down smooth and tastes terrific. What's with the name? Miami Vice. It's just something the guys up in marketing came up with. Cool. It's uh, from the Project X series of, uh, of their beers so apparently it did really well. Now to make things even more freaking interesting, okay? I know this might be a little boring so far. I was going to do this justice by putting it in a uh, whole garden glass, uh, which is also another Hef Weizen beer. Um, but I saw a really cool way to pour a Hef Weizen or Weizen uh, beer online, and I feel like I've been doing it wrong this entire time. So I decided I'm going to I'm going to use a glass that this should be able to fit entirely into. Now, oh, that's amazing! I can just I can just pop that right off without it being stuck to the ending of the beer cap or the beer nozzle, whatever you want to call it. Now, check this out. Okay. Smells different. All right, now check this out. If this works, this is how you pour a Hefweizen beer. Okay? wondering what the hell am I doing? Check this out. Thought I was gonna lose it there, eh? Is that really done? Oh, I see you're supposed to lift it up. I, it didn't show it very closely in the other video. Check it out. Oh, it's all head. It's all head. So, you saw that awesomeness. Now the most important part is with uh, Hefweizen beers, they have the nice sediment at the end. You want to stir it up and you want to get that in there too. I have just enough liquid to make that happen. 
nice heft Weizen beer always has a very nice frothy head at the ending. Just made it into the glass, ladies and gentlemen. It's the first time I've done that. I can see myself doing it smoothly from now on. Uh, but, you know, we got by. We got a 650 milliliter brew here, which is why I was able to just squeeze it into this glass. Now, what happened, for those who don't really know what the hell's going on, is it got to the point where the beer in the glass, the weight of the beer in the glass was greater than the weight uh, in the bottle, and it was able to hold the beer within the bottle. I don't know. I can't explain sciences behind it, but that's why it worked. And to get the beer to, to pour in, as soon as it became airtight, as I started bouncing it, I kept it in the water, but I would, I would, I would take it out of the water and put it back into the water bit by bit. So that's that's why I was able to do that. Uh, look, still. Oh, look at that! Wasn't that cool? Wow, you think everything's gone because everything was trapped in an air bubble. I poured, I, I put it down, I picked it back up, and I poured it out, and maybe another like teaspoon of beer popped out after the bubble, which is really cool. Holy smokes, look at this, 620. I haven't even gotten into the drinking yet. Nice, wonderful, frothy head. Taste, uh, smells somewhat, somewhat syrupy, kind of like an IPA, which is kind of strange, but, you know. They said it's an American style take on a Hefeweizen beer, so we gotta think different here. Ha 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 ha. I was totally right. That is cool, man. Honestly, when I had it at the beer fest, I don't know if I really liked it that much. Uh, I said there's people drinking it with me at the time. And basically, I was the one who said uh it's not bad but like is it is it amazing is it is it is it great would i buy it no but this is actually good i'm buying it now and it's surprising me uh, there's been a couple of beers at the beer fest that i've had um where i didn't like it at the time and then later on it developed a taste for an acquired taste for it and i actually started to grow on it so yeah i'm not saying anything bad about the beer fest uh, I've had a lot of really good beers at the beer fest. I'm I'm just saying flat out, like, you know, you gotta develop your taste. Plus, I had it coming from a cask originally. Now it's coming from bottle. So, which was of course something that came from a cask. <laughs> So yeah, this is really good. The one thing that I'm, I'm curious about is whether or not it tastes a little bit like uh, like more syrupy at the ending here or not. One thing that is really cool, though, that I'm picking up on that I never noticed before is... Excuse me. I don't want to say it's because I read that there was bananas at the back here. It, in fact, it didn't say that it had bananas. It said... What did it say? It compared it to something else. Uh, yeah, here we go. It's made with a pale ale yeast. Okay, there you go. Pale ale yeast. That's why I got the IPA taste in here, which doesn't produce the same banana flavor you find in German Weiss beers. Then, okay, they say it's not the same banana flavor, so it's a different banana flavor, and because it's a different banana flavor, I can actually taste it in here. I've never tasted banana in, I, in an IPA or, or a, a pale ale ever. So... I'm learning things as we're going along here. It, uh, it looks much like a West Coast IPA instead of an East Coast IPA, I believe. Um, actually, it being American, I can actually say that it looks very much like a an American style IPA, which is really cool. They all have different colors. Some of them are darker than the rest. Some of them are more syrupy than the rest. That's the kind of main gist to them, if you ask me. They all kind of have a grape fruity type flavor to them. I can almost compare this to the Flying Monkeys Brewery uh, Optical Illusion. That's probably, yeah, and uh, that one was considered an almost pale ale. So yeah, it's really, really cool how uh, this beer market is 
is rolling around right now because I, I'm telling you, there's a huge shortage in hops right now in uh, in the world, and that's why I don't know why. Uh, you know why? Because hops are in such high demand right now because of the fact that people are enjoying hops more than ever ever in this this world has ever experienced at the at the amount of that it is experiencing right now. Um, people weren't really big hoppy fans there for a while, and then boom, out of nowhere, this huge hop market's coming into effect, and a whole other world of uh, beer drinkers have uh, developed as a result. And then I'm talking like, I know for sure in America and here in Canada, that's how it's been. It's pretty crazy. Um, all right, people, I'm rambling. Uh, thanks for joining me on my freaking long beer review. Uh, don't drink and drive, but drink responsibly. I am going to rate this a 3.9 out of 5. I've been doing real good with ratings lately, uh, and that's because I've been having really good beers. Another thing I want to say, uh, lastly, if I find that this changes taste near the ending, I will indicate that on the description for you. Cool? All right. Cheers.